the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our hymn is in your bulletin, the first two verses of Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. The first reading is from the fourth chapter of Acts. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, 
and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no one under the name of heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The second reading is from the third chapter of 1 John. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another, just as he commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. Here ends the lessons. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. St. John writes, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from the Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let me invite the kids up for the children's sermon. Hi, Ellie, come on up. Have a seat there, and you're gonna have a, have a couple of companies. Hi. So I'm gonna give you a copy of this. And one of the things that we know about Ellie is that you really like princesses. Well, well, skunks are good, but let's talk about prince, princesses and queens for the, for the moment, okay? Let me tell you a story about somebody who's not a princess, but is a queen. So take a look at that picture, and you can see there's a queen there named 
Esther, and with her is her uncle, Mordecai. And Esther is in the Bible, and she's a great hero. Now, let me tell you the story so that you know why I gave you this picture. You know how in every Disney movie where there's a princess, there's a bad guy? The bad guy is Haman. And Haman wants to take over, and Haman wants to bring destruction on a lot of people. But Esther's the queen. And Esther finds out about this. And Esther goes to the king and says, you think Haman's a good guy? He's not. Haman is bad. And he's trying to bring destruction to the whole country. Now, this takes place in Persia a long time ago. And when Esther... Hey, I love yes, well, there, there are some movies about this. Maybe Mom can find you a movie about it. All right. Esther goes to the king, and the king says, we can't have this. Haman is a terrible person. So what happens at the end of every Disney movie? The, 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 the queen, so the queen makes sure that good happens and the bad guy loses. And that's exactly what happens in the story of Esther, which is in the book of Esther in the Bible. And of course, we're going to bring that. You have a purple Bible? Purple Bibles are the best Bibles. I have one in my place. Well, I'm glad you have a Bible. And not to ignore, how are you guys doing? Kind of interesting being up here for the first time, isn't it? But listen, I'm glad to have you here. The story about Haman is good for little girls and for little boys, and for big girls and for big boys. So, so this. Good. So listen, you you can take that home. Now, there's actually a festival that celebrates what God did through Esther, and that's called Purim, and that happens in May. I've actually got the date down there. Okay. So take a while. Let's say a prayer together. So how we pray? Put our hands together. Okay? And we're going to bow our heads and we're going to pray. Lord, we thank you that you send great heroes to save your people, like Esther and like Jesus. Send, send us heroes today, we pray. Amen. Okay. Tell you what, how about... If you take this back to your mom, okay, and you can tell her, I want to see a movie about Esther. <laughs> Guys, thanks for coming up. I enjoyed having all three of you. And now I again invite you to pray with me. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, and every year on the fourth Sunday of Easter, we celebrate Good Shepherd Sunday. Our hymns revolve around the theme of Jesus the Good Shepherd, as well as the blessing that is Holy Communion. Good Shepherd Sunday always involves reading a gospel lesson from the 10th chapter of John's Gospel. 10th chapter of John's Gospel is all about Jesus the Good Shepherd. And for congregations that read a psalm as a part of their worship, the psalm is always the 23rd psalm, a well-beloved psalm, and you can look that up at home. On this joyous Good Shepherd Sunday, we're going to sing the hymns we already sang, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us, and at the end of the service, we'll sing the King of Love, My Shepherd Is. And in the lessons, we hear that Jesus is the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. The good shepherd knows the sheep, and the sheep know the good shepherd. Now, the image of the shepherd is used frequently in the Old Testament, but in a way that's different from what we might expect. In the Old Testament, the image of the shepherd is a royal image. It is the king of Israel or the king of Judah 
remember that what we, we now know as, as Israel was split after the death of King Solomon. It is the king of Israel or the king of Judah who is supposed to be the shepherd of the people. Supposed to be, but often not. Sadly, the kings of Israel and Judah were generally bad kings. They did not care for the people. They did not follow God's laws. About 550 years before Jesus was born, the prophet Ezekiel will, will denounce all the kings who failed to be good shepherds. God announces that God will become the shepherd of the people since the kings had done a terrible job of caring for the lost, the poor, and the sick. When Jesus announces that he is the good shepherd, Jesus is challenging both the Roman military administration and the Jewish Sanhedrin. Jesus will provide what the kings and the Roman administrators and the Judean high priest would not do. Jesus will care for the people. Jesus will love the poor and the outcast. Well, today, the indictment that the rulers of the people do not really care about the poor and the sick and the outcast still holds. Yes, there is some societal care for those in need, but can anyone really argue that all public servants are dedicated to the care of the poor and the hungry? I doubt anybody would make that argument. What does it mean for Jesus to be the good shepherd and to be our good shepherd. Well, I think we can take away three lessons. First, Jesus loves us. We can delight in the shepherd who seeks out the lost. We can know that God loves us even during the times when we go astray, the times when we are threatened by wolves. There are plenty of times when bad things happen to good people. It is then that, that we look to Jesus, our good shepherd. And when our lives are going well, we can look to the good shepherd who lays us down in green pastures and leads us beside still waters and who restores our soul. Well, second, we can do our best to be part of the flock. Yes, if we get lost, Jesus, the good shepherd, will go looking for us. But isn't it better not to get lost in the first place? I mean, who wants to be wandering around in the wilderness hoping that the shepherd will find you? I remember in school as I was you know, handed crayons and various things to color. And I remember being told, stay within the lines. The lines are your friend. Well, that's a good lesson for life. It's heartbreaking when we find ourselves in trouble and we take a hard look and we see, you know what? We got ourselves into trouble. We're looking at Jesus to get us out, but we got ourselves into this mess. We wandered off from the flock. I remember some lessons I learned early on. What would I do if I thought my mother was watching me? And if I wouldn't do something because I thought mom was watching me, maybe I shouldn't do it when mom's not watching me. Well, what would I do if I knew that my actions would be on local news the next day and everybody would know? So in short, stay with the flock. Listen to the voice of the good shepherd. Well, third, Jesus loves all the people around us. Jesus is the good shepherd. Can we not also, on our own, seek to be shepherds in the world in which we live? Can we not, in Jesus' name, care for the poor, the outcast, the stranger, and the sick? Now, exactly what it means for us to be shepherds to those around us varies. I'm always touched when somebody 
in the congregation says, well, I'm not available to go to this meeting or come into the church office at this time because I'm driving somebody else to the doctor. And I always think, okay, things are going well. Keep doing that. I'm touched by the people I know who deliver meals on wheels. I'm touched by those who help out in any number of ways from providing child care to cleaning to financial charity of any kind to somebody in the family or a neighbor or just a total stranger. Now, we can never be the good shepherd, but perhaps we can be a good shepherd. We can bask in the love of the good shepherd. We can do our best to stay with the flock and not get lost. We can be a shepherd to some small number of those whom Jesus loves. We just sang, Savior like a shepherd lead us, much we need your tender care. The fourth verse reads this way. Early let us seek your favor. Early let us do your will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with you, and with your love, our spirits fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved us, love us still. So when you leave church today, keep in mind the Good Shepherd. Stay with the flock. Listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd. And then figure out how you can be a good assistant shepherd. Amen. Our hymn is number 711. That's in your blue hymnal. The first two verses. I invite you to rise.
God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen, and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Shepherd and God, you gather your church wherever we wander from you and one another. Empower our church and ministries around the world to worship and serve alongside global companions as equal partners and co-workers in the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, nurture God, preserve the health of our earth, inspire scientists, researchers, conservation organizations, and all people entrusted with the task of caring for creation, that we may be better stewards of the world around us. Lord, in your mercy. Your Almighty God, lead nations and communities to share resources, cooperate in solving conflicts, and listen to the opinions of indigenous peoples. Help all those with power to share it, and to use such power for good. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, protect the very young and the very old, those living without housing, victims of domestic abuse, and all who live with chronic illness or compromised immune systems. Heal the sick. God communities to actively care for people who are vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, Help this in all communities of faith to listen for your voice. Call us away from things that distract us from following you. Invite us to more deeply love and serve people who are lonely, isolated, and on the margins. Lord, in your mercy. Living God, we give thanks for our ancestors in faith, including Anselm of Canterbury, and all who labored to help generations understand the good news of the gospel. Strengthen us to share the good news in our own day. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to see the music of the offer.
I invite you to rise for the offertory prayer as we move towards the service of Holy King. Let us pray together. Risen One, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. It is indeed right that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord, for he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. I invite you to be seated while the communion assistants come forward, and then I will invite you forward for Holy Communion. All baptized Christians are welcome at the Lord's table. There is a laminated blue card in each of the pews that tell how we do communion here at St. John's.
bless you and keep you in the covenant of your baptism. Amen. Body of Christ. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Please come forward. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Lord bless you and keep you in the covenant of your baptism. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Lord bless you and keep you in the covenant of your baptism. Bless you and keep you in the covenant of your baptism. Amen. The body of the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ. Of Christ given for you. The Lord bless you and keep you in the covenant of your baptism. The body of Christ given for you. 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 The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ given for you. 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 Okay, what? I invite you to rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you unto everlasting life. Amen.
Almighty God, you gave your son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our hymn number 456 in your green hymnal, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is, the first two verses. Thank you. 